Now we're going to do a, an earth fault loop impedance test, or sometimes known as a, a direct ZS measurement. And uh, there's actually two methods of measuring the ZS. So ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2, or we can measure ZS in one operation. That's what we're actually going to do here. But it's important to remember that um, when we actually do this measurement and conduct the test, we are now including parallel paths. So the reading will be very slightly different than your calculated reading um, for that particular reason, because the parallel paths will potentially lower the resistance. So you may expect the reading to be slightly lower. <clears throat> it's also important to remember that we're actually going to be doing it here on a, a ring circuit. So we're going to test it at every socket, but this time the reading will vary at every socket. The reason is we no longer have the cross connection in place that we had when we were doing R1 and R2 for the initial verification. So just to show you what we've got here, it's an RCD upstream and we need to configure the meter so that it actually does what we call a low current test. Um, because if we didn't do that, it would just simply trip the RCD. So I've set the meter to do a low current test. Now we can use this very convenient plug socket to do a direct ZS measurement here. Um, but something like a lighting circuit, you can imagine the danger involved with getting three probes into the ceiling rows. We would generally tend to use the addition method for that. So the ZS for that would be ZE plus R1 and R2, but this one, for safety, we can actually measure it directly. So we're going to um, be measuring the, Z, the ZS on this circuit here, which is protected by a 32 amp breaker, and we're allowed 1.1 ohms according to BS7671. Now we're going to get a slightly higher reading here, primarily because we've got extension leads and uh, we're including wiring in other parts of the building. So I'm going to start the test. And because it's a low current test, it can take rather a long time. It seems ages when you're waiting, but that's only, actually only a few seconds. But it does about six tests in order to try not to trip the RCD. So that's coming out at 1.16. I know it's higher than it should be, but that's because of the extension leak. And for a ring, you would go around every socket and try and find the highest one. That's the one you would record. So yet again, we're coming out with another reading. And this time it's 1.16. So again, slightly higher than we'd like. So very important to bear in mind that we don't have that cross connection in place anymore. So it will, in fact, vary as it goes around the ring. 1.17. And needless to say, we will record the highest figure as our ZS for the circuit. So for the final test, it's coming up with 1.1. So 1.17 would be the recorded result. Thank you.